So uh, this talk would be about uh, visual language models for autonomous driving. Um, so Wave is a, is a company that uh, tries to disrupt the uh, autonomous cars industry. I mean, uh, you guys uh, don't see really many autonomous cars around, so there's not much to, of dis to disrupt yet, but, uh, but still. Uh, and the typical self-driving stack consists of uh, many components. Uh, so the typical uh, autonomous car takes sensors, you know, many sensors like cameras, uh, lidars, rad uh, radars, and so on. It has many perception modules, planning modules, and control, and, and um, uh, you know, and the people uh, in those companies try to uh, make them all work together, which is quite tricky. Uh, but what we do at Wave, we try to learn the whole thing, the whole autonomous stack, uh, stack end to end. Uh, effectively just taking uh, inputs from vision, from cameras, uh, and uh, producing uh, motion control plans that could be sent to a controller. And uh, again, all of that doesn't have any components at all, and uh, the whole thing is just a big neural network. Um, oh, wh why, uh, why are we doing this? So the promises of such uh, like feed-forward end-to-end systems um, are, well, first of all, it's computationally very simple. It's a big neural network, so it's a, uh, it will have very simple robot runtimes. So it's effective. You just need to run inference as opposed to many, many components and interact with them. It's predictable uh, running time, memory use. I mean, that's its challenge as well because we want to make it as big as possible, but still it's pretty simple uh, model. Another thing that people don't discuss much in deep learning companies, it's actually, in my opinion, way faster development cycle because uh, there are so like few model uh, modules to think about. So, hence, there are fewer teams. There's no like a perception team and motion team, and just like one person can own the whole stack end to end. And uh, effectively, one single researcher can make a self-driving car in our, at our company. Uh, but obviously, the main uh, promise is superior performance because uh, end to end techniques are supposed to uh, outperform human coders. And uh, um, show different emergence properties and generalization to edge cases. Uh, uh, all right, so here are a few uh, emerging properties of so something that we did not uh, teach model to do. You can see that uh, on the left top, the model uh, just kind of goes on over a newspaper on the road. Uh, whereas uh, on the right, it uh, avoids nicely uh, a trash bin tipped over. And again, we were not segmenting anything. We, know, we don't have labels for newspapers or trash bins. Uh, the model uh, just learned it from demonstrations, and then it's unlikely that we had a demonstration of newspaper in this specific location or anything like that. So you see it starts to show these capabilities that are surprising even to us as developers. And here are more examples. Uh, such emergent properties. Uh, for example, on the left, the bottom, uh, we had a, we had snow in London, like maybe two years ago or already, and uh, we actually at that moment uh, didn't really invest much into gathering data in snowy countries. So that was also completely emergent. We just like we decided, okay, let's just test it, and it worked out. Um, uh, the same goes for very complicated scenes in London, like overtaking parked buses. Uh, and uh, on the right top, you can see uh, this like behavior, very human-like, uh, where we're just kind of nudging through, uh, like behind pedestrians, just kind of waiting for some time. Uh, and they'll pass us because the car behaves like a human, uh, more or less, so like everyone knows what to do. Uh, but there are uh, obviously limitations to uh, the self-driving, uh, sorry, this end-to-end -end approach. Uh, one is that this is like a big transformer network. We don't know what's inside. As a speaker before said, explainability just gets worse and worse. Uh, and that's uh, totally true for us where we actually consume a video from multi-cameras. It's a multi-step input, so it's uh, many frames uh, across the time and space. Uh, and that's all fed into that big uh, network and just produces the trajectory to follow. So debugging and explainability, it's tough to do in, uh, in that setup. Uh, then uh, we need a lot of data, and specifically uh, edge case data is the most precious. 
uh, so it's some kind of novel combinations of objects, uh, rare objects on the road, and like people just being uh, crazy and creative, like you can see in the bottom. And uh, so obviously to train such like end-to-end -end network, you need to somehow get this all uh, all sorts of very weird data, and uh, you know it's very hard for a startup to to do that. Uh, and uh, yet another. Um, Limitation is that typical in a classical system you have this uh, long-term planners that can uh, think ahead in several uh, kind of on a long temporal uh, scale and um, kind of understand what to do different options and uh, except Monte Carlo research which is very slow to run uh, there are not very many uh, there were not many like uh, uh, responses to how to do planning on this end to end into, in end to end systems and uh, after we we see that uh, language models can do this reasoning and so on. We decided to start this project called Lingo that's supposed to address all those uh, small limitations, not small, well, uh, big limitations. Uh, and uh, the first model I wanted to show is called uh, Lingo number one, uh, is the model that just takes in video, uh, puts it through the big network, uh, uh, LLM, VLM, and so on, and produces uh, text so you can chat about the video that you see, and the video is a cell, is an autonomous uh, driving video. And uh, uh, here are the few challenges to, uh, to develop that model. First, it's a vision model, so it's not just a, a LLM, so it's supposed to take vision. Moreover, it's a video model, so it doesn't take a single frame, but it takes in the video, because in driving you want to reason about videos. Uh, it's about navigation, which is highly spatial, uh, which is not really uh, strength for uh, VLMs if you try to play with GPT-4V and so on. And also there are no benchmarks and also we wanted to make a quite small model which can do all of that. So here are the demos that we ended up with. I'm just going to read if it's too small. Uh, what's the weather like? Uh, the model says it's rainy. Uh, do you drive differently in the rain? Uh, yes, I need to be more cautious because of rainy conditions. How come? Uh, due to rainy conditions, the road might be slippery and the visibility might be reduced. I need to drive more cautiously. Uh, when will you go? I will go once the black sedan in front of me starts moving. So you see, like, we just go seamlessly between uh, common sense reasoning and the actual scene understanding and so on. Uh, so you just say, okay, is it true? Uh, so and someone says yes, but the answer is no. And here's the proof. It's a sunny... Uh, seen in London, uh, and uh, just uh, another demo, why you stopped, I'm stopped because the traffic light is red, uh, what are the top three hazards you're paying attention to, so it says traffic light, uh, cyclists, and uh, some pedestrians, uh, yeah, and then it explains why it pays attention to those hazards, because they can impact my driving, and so on. And uh, yeah, we released uh, recently a data set that uh, uh, we used f to fine tune that model. Well, just a part of it, which we were able to release uh, openly, uh, which has like many unique scenarios uh, about actions and scenery and so on. So check it out if you want to uh, train your own VLMs. And uh, uh, well, these are the quantitative results of that uh, project. A uh, few interesting points. Uh, is it first also humans score about 93% on that benchmark that we released, uh, which means that it's kind of quite noisy and maybe not uh, because they don't score like 100% or 99. So humans sometimes disagree about reasons how to drive. And the gap between humans and the next VLM is huge. It's 30%, right? So we tried the GPT-4V. That mom moment, obviously, we didn't try the new one, uh, gpt 4 o now, right? Uh, and the uh, 4V is impressive because uh, it's pretty much zero shot, just does 60%. But yeah, we reached the same performance as GPT-4V with that. Uh, but obviously our model is a fine-tuned model and it's way smaller. Uh, so it's actually 7 billion only. Um, okay, but uh, then after releasing that, uh, we just, we kind of realized we got some feedback, we understood the main challenges uh, and uh, we just asked uh, ourselves this question, why do we even trust human drivers? Because we want to solve explainability and uh, trust issues and so on. And if you think about it, uh, we actually don't have like very good tests for humans to drive. 
the humans just go and drive for one hour. Well, this is in London, in California, I mean, I think it's like 10 minutes, if I remember correctly. <laughs> so, and then you pass a theory test, which is also about one hour. And, uh, you know, wh whoever uh, tried to pass that test, we just heavily overfit to that test, and then we probably, you know, forget all of it. Uh, so, and then we just let, okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, so you can drive now. So it's orders of magnitude less testing that a typical self-driving company would do uh, uh, for, uh, for its model. Uh, you know, companies like, uh, uh, you know, Waymo and Cruise and ours obviously test uh, these models a lot, just uh, orders of orders of magnitude more than just one hour test. But then, uh, why do we trust humans, though? So the, the main, uh, re uh, there are a few reasons, and uh, one of them is that we just all share this common sense knowledge. And uh, for example, we don't allow kids to drive just because of that, actually, because kids haven't got this level of knowledge that we all share. So we know that, we, we believe that, okay, everyone would understand what's happening. And uh, this is exactly very, uh, this is similar to this um, fact that I said that we need a lot of edge cases. So when we actually train those VLMs, so we take advantage of this large internet uh, scale uh, data that we can put into this uh, VLMs. Uh, hence, we're kind of covering for that common sense uh, aspect of, of models. The next uh, thing though is that uh, y you guys seen that this model was actually taking video, producing some explanations, but the driving itself was done by another model. And that's very similar to as you, you know, could be sitting on the back seat and try to explain what's the driver in front of you doing, but this driver might be doing it completely for a, for a different reason. And um, while well, Lingo One can explain his decisions, uh, you know, you, you don't have much trust in this explanation because it could be completely out of thin air, really, right? Because it's coming from the video, whereas driving model, which actually drives a car, uh, could be doing completely something else. And in humans, this is all in the same model. We know that when human drives a car uh, and you ask questions about this driving, human actually tells you the reason for its own, for you know, his or her uh, actions, right? As opposed to reasons for some other actions. Uh, and uh, yet another reason is that it's not only, uh, human doesn't only explain uh, what's happening uh, with like specific decision, a human can uh, learn from words, it can react to some instructions, it can, uh, well, kind of, it's all hap uh, happening in a closed loop, right? And then we all uh, have this very complicated uh, feedback kind of architecture uh, where it's all action, uh, you know, perception and action and explanation, it's all happening in like a very messy closed loop. And uh, hence, uh, we went to like yet another journey, which is, uh, next iteration of the system, which is Lingo 2, uh, two which is uh, an embodied visual language model. Uh, the idea is to merge together a driving model, which is a main competency of the, of the company and this Lingo 1 that can explain things, and uh, make it the same model that can take in uh, uh, a video, it can take in chat from the, from the user, uh, and then produce not only explanations and like uh, ability to chat with the user, but also uh, a trajectory prediction such that it itself can drive and explain its own decision. And it's all in the same network with the same weights. Uh, the challenges of that system is that, well, first of all, we inherit all the first system challenges, which is being vision and video, you know, processing spatial information. Uh, but, but then now we cannot even uh, so, the, by the way, the first system was just single camera video input, but now to drive we need to get in, um, take in uh, three cameras at least, or, or even seven sometimes, uh, because we have to have it for driving. And uh, all well-performing generic VLMs, like again GPT-4V, would be probably more than 100 billion parameters, but we want to run it on a car in the real time while it generates decisions. Uh, then uh, f for people who try to uh, to do any multimodal uh, challenges, there are many challenges in training that and evaluating. And uh, our evaluation has to happen also on the real uh, embodied platform. This is kind of a high level training recipe 
where initially we pre-train our vision model. Uh, this is our proprietary self-driving uh, model. And the main idea is to be able to efficiently consume all these video streams from multiple cameras to get a nice representation. Uh, then we perform uh, this language alignment where uh, we try to uh, now align together this uh, language modality together with this driving vision modality. And uh, lastly, we finally uh, align all of that to ac action, which is like a third modality. And uh, the interesting bit is, not, is that it's not an input modality, it's the output modality. And um, there are some challenges how to do that as well. Uh, so this is the demo that we released. Uh, you can see that uh, at the bottom, uh, we just kind of generate explanation for the actions that the model is taking right now. And the, the model drives itself. So you can see like in green, it's a predicted trajectory. It's actually uh, autonomous run. And uh, VLM consumes the, the plan, right? And then able to... Uh, explain uh, decisions kind of that that is doing and so in the same way it's the same network so we kind of covered uh, more or less those abilities right which is uh, we got the pre-trained uh, large-scale model from internet data uh, it's all connected together and it's all in a single a single loop uh, how much time do you have good for me nice all right so then a uh, few more just uh, examples of this uh, three modalities because I find it the most interesting when you actually draw this this way where you say okay I I'm going to take vision I'm going to take text and uh, there is a third modality being actions and uh, I'm generating text out and generating responses right and then you s start to think okay what if I just use parts of them and how do they like all relate together which is a interesting exercise so first of all it's, uh, it can do just pure driving right which is you just take in video and then you generate actions uh, next you can do explanations of its own actions offline let's say right you can say okay well that model uh, after that run you can uh, you take in video and then you can generate different plans and see okay which plan uh, the thing can explain and so on and so on so you just kind of explain yourself as I said, this is like where you start to interchange actions and uh, explanations for those actions, which is uh, really nicely tells you like, okay, well, those modalities are correctly aligned. Uh, then another cool thing you can do is that you can generate explanation yourself and then act on that explanation. And that is, uh, well, it, it's, it could be viewed as a chain of thought reasoning where first you, uh, kind of come up with a decision and you act on it, right? Or some kind of hierarchical control. Uh, then the interesting bit is that that high level decision at the same time becomes your own justification and, and explanation. So uh, yeah, I find it like really interesting that, you know, you can decide on something and explain it. And at the same time, it serves the um, ability to reason about what's going to happen and also an explanation for external user to, to get more trust. Um, and uh, yeah, this is kind of work in progress. I don't have a good demo for that yet, but um, we can think about uh, way longer chain of thought reasoning where you can uh, kind of get onto, onto some intersection and say, okay, let's think step by step what I see. I see traffic light is green, the road curves left, there is a bus in front, hence my action is something, and you actually generate that action, you do it really in, a, in this closed loop fashion, like a human. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the conclusions are uh, multimodal language models are the future, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Thank